my name is Katie. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm bringing you a new type of outlining plan and this is for the romance writers out there, the ones that have a romance subplot or main plot. So sorry everyone else, just skip this video if you want. But this is in lieu of feedback for my Romancing Fate book and I was told, which this has been on my list for a while, to read Romancing the Beat. Romancing the Beat is kind of like Save the Cat, so if that's something that you're already doing, then this will kind of seamlessly go into it. They do some things differently where like the midpoint counts in the second, oh my gosh, quarter of your book, and then the Darkest Night of the Soul counts towards the Act 3 part. So some of it's kind of twisty, but um, I'll go into that a little bit more. But basically, this has, uh, this is kind of that, the setup, then they fall in love, retreat from love, and then fight for love. And so it's pretty like formulaic in how you do it. And it really, really helped me with Romancing Fate because I didn't have that tension there. My story plot was different anyways and so I got feedback but that's a whole different story anyway sorry um I'm just gonna walk you through this book and oh my gosh I'm sorry I'm getting over a cough still for like two weeks now but I'm like I need to make these videos this is a very easily digested book so if you have you know if you want to go buy it I encourage it I really like thought Oh, it's this tiny, this isn't going to help me, but I really enjoyed it. And it's different also from the beat sheet, like romance beat sheet that I have. It's from Jamie Gold, and it's called Story Planning for Pantsers Romance Beat Sheet. And that was on her website, Jamie, J-A-M-I, gold.com. And so I compared that to Romancing Fate as well. And hers takes more on like the three act structure. It lists pinch points and different things like that. But what I love about this book and Save the Cat is you get a whole paragraph for why you're doing that. What you're really trying to accomplish and examples. And that really helps me versus just like oh, pinch point. And you're like, okay. I mean, you can also Google, but you feel me? So... The setup in Romancing the Beat is where your main character and their love interests meet and there's got to be like something compelling going on in your main character's life. So if you think of any of the romance like rom-com movies like, oh life is perfect except I hate my job, my boyfriend cheated on me, like whatever, there's that one thing, right? And so you introduce those um, things and you give them external stakes like, okay, I lost my job, what am I going to go do? And um, bonus if your two characters are in opposition. So if one wants to buy a bookstore and the other one wants to tear it down and make it apartment complex or something, like the more better, like the more tension you can have, the better. So in this setup, you're going to hint at what um, each character needs, what's holding them back, and then view every scene through the character's wound or lens. So if they've been cheated on, they're going to go into each scenario, each scene with that in the back of their head, like, hey, all guys cheat. I'm not going to give anyone a chance. Um, or girls, sorry. <laughs> but, you know, it's always going to be their wound, their flaw, and their reason for not committing to anything. So, next we have the meet cute, which could happen in that first chapter even, um, where sparks are going to fly, but their internal thoughts are going to be like, man, this was fun, but all guys or girls cheat. It's like always there, right? So, you're going to showcase your external goals and show that they're in conflict with the internal flaws. And with that meet cute, you're gonna get to the no way number one. The reason that heck no, I'm not gonna go for that guy or girl because of my wound, whatever. But, plot twist, they're gonna get thrown together anyway. So, you know, trying to save a bookshop, trying to tear it down. Hey, guess who's going to council meetings together? Guess who's going to buyers meetings? <laughs> like, whatever, they're gonna get thrown together. Um, so your characters have met and expressed their non-interest in falling in love, or if you wanna go sexy time stuff, they can have a fling and get it out of their system. 
And then the plot line is so that they cannot leave each other, right? So now they have to like deal with each other and they're no way. And um, some more examples are like the convenience, marriage of convenience. I'm also thinking like spies or something. Um, maybe they're on the run. They have a fake relationship. They're entered into a contest together. Um, they have like a forced partnership for whatever reason. Bring them together. And then introduce more external goals and set about making them miserable. Okay, so that's gonna bring you to the 20 to 25% mark where we're going to into phase two, which I love that this is broken up into fours, which kind of save the cut as two, and anytime you're digesting act two because it's so large, you split it. So this is falling in love. Actually, I don't know how this would look. Anyway, second quarter, falling in love, up to the 50% mark. Um, this is your fun and games beat, basically. Your main characters still proclaim their unwillingness to change, but you start shooting holes in the walls around their hearts and make them fall in love. So, each scene you could build sexual tension if that's what you're going for, or just um, like physical attraction or whatever. Um, you're going to be taking two steps forward, one step back. Later, like towards the end when they're like, miserable they're gonna look back and be like wow this person made me a better person so you're setting like all this glue and stuff in this little quarter so then you have your no way number two so you're gonna restate the argument about why they're not gonna fall in love and add a bit more backstory if you need to and then your characters are really going to want to block themselves from the other person and avoid temptation but you keep tempting them because one, they're adhesioned, adhesed, adhesioned now. <laughs> and uh, two, they like secretly want to. So after this, they have an inkling it could work. So give them a hole in their heart that's gonna make them stop and think. This could be an intimate moment. They witness a good deed. That's with all the like save the cat. That's what that character does. It's to make you like them, but the same could be applied for this, like it's gonna make you like that love interest. Maybe they witness an off character thing that makes them view them differently. Kind of still a good deed. Um, a tender or sexy moment, share a personal truth or secrets, defend the other one, or make them feel like it's us against the world and you know, whatever. <laughs> Anything that's gonna like push them a little bit closer. The next one is deepening desire, so they're going to start falling for each other. They no longer deny themselves that they want each other physically, and they feel drawn in a way that's hard to fight. They're going to have those like lingering gazes, sweet moments, start to show glimpses of who they really are. Now, everything I'm saying right now is really going to depend on the age that you're doing this. So for adult, you're going to like ramp it up more as YA is more like sweet right? It's supposed to be, except for all those middle NA people that are YA still. So we're almost at 50% and we're going to ramp up the intensity and fall into the uh, maybe this will work phase. So they've been showing each other things that make them more vulnerable to the other and they think, what if I just gave in? This is pretty nice. So if they've had sex already, make it different, more meaningful and if they or maybe this is like the first time they have it but whatever it is they need to be more vulnerable by the end of the beat so we're pushing forward to the midpoint and you're going to show them that everything they've wanted is in reach so example it's the perfect morning after they open up to each other and share their deepest darkest secret or fear they tell a family or themselves just like how right it feels and how different it is and you're going to bring them reach really really high because now we're entering retreat from love phase three so the change has to come from facing their flaws their wounds their misconceptions and they have to overcome them they're reluctant to fully commit so you're gonna start attacking their soft spots and that would be their shards so like like I said earlier all women or men cheat so they're gonna start thinking like is this person cheating um all men leave um can't have love and a career because my mom had that and like it destroyed her life like whatever hit them in that little that issue button so to kick off this phase they're gonna have an inkling of doubt things feel good but they're gonna get a quick sucker punch in the feels and give that inkling of doubt each beat will be progressively harder so think of the worst thing that can happen 
and then back it up and level up to that and remind them of their wound or flaw and start planting those seeds of doubt the next phase is deepening doubt so they start to get attached but seed of doubt is poking through they're not going to admit something is wrong but they'll feel it from the other person because each one's reacting to that right you got those like awkward moments and you start pulling back farther and farther like i don't want to get hurt i don't know what's happening so you make them feel more guarded um so if you're writing an adult book they can still have sex but um it's mostly going to be like internal dilemma and it doesn't feel the same as it did in the fun and games and what's going on and um this could be more than one scene if you need it to be so the next one is retreat. You're gonna make sure these beats are tailored to their weaknesses. So maybe she'll misinterpret signs, like if she thinks he's cheating, but really he's meeting with someone to um, buy her dream house or to buy a wedding ring or whatever. Like it's things that she's gonna misinterpret. And then Friends had a great episode on that, if anyone's a Friends watcher, uh, where Chandler was looking at a house. But anyway, and don't make these just misunderstandings, like they say something and the other one's like, blah, blah. like everyone hates that trope, don't do it, ew. Okay, don't make it a misunderstanding. Um, so it could be a secret, maybe they're keeping secrets, um, which makes the other one defensive and therefore they put up their boundaries or whatever. Please don't make it a misunderstanding. <laughs> so um, actually say their fear and that they're protecting their hearts. They can say that to themselves or to their family and friends. And then they're going to put shields up. This is the number four of this qu quarter quadrant. Um, shields up. They think their fear fears were right. Their fears have come true. But they've created that self-fulfilling prophecy. So they made it come true. Um, so the next one is breakup. Um, so they might have broken up in that last scene or they could do it in this one, but it's going to be a final blowout. One or both characters have to choose love or fear and one or both of them has to choose fear. They're too scared to fully commit and take that final step. So this can happen alongside the external plot and it's called the black moment. Um, to add that emotional layer, just when like everything starts crapping down, this is the moment they choose to hold on to that fear, flaw, wound, or misconception instead of opening up their hearts completely, okay? So put them down, they've lost everything, they've given up on love, yada yada. And we're gonna enter phase four, which is fighting for love. So we're not gonna do that just yet, but your characters are going to realize how dumb they've been and start clawing their way back to each other with what you set up in that phase two section, right? <clears throat> but first, this is the part that's weird with Save the Cat is that now we're going to have the darkest night of the soul, but they're going to realize that they did it to themselves or maybe their mentor or friend tells them what an idiot they are. And then they have to know that they chose that path. They chose fear over love <clears throat> and um, know that they messed up and they need to fix it. So the next one is wake up. The MC has spent time realizing they're miserable because they chose to be. They had some advice and realized they need to destroy the, the wall around their fear, wound, or misconception. This time I choose love over fear. At least one of them needs to go out on a limb to woo the other one back. This is kind of where, well actually, <laughs> great gestures next, hang on. So they may realize they may be too late and um, maybe it's too late to win back the love they lost, like <laughs> boohoo. So then you're gonna go into the grand gesture. So he or she must be willing to put it all on the line or risk losing the one thing they need to become wholehearted. Um, so this could be a death of career, of pride, a goal, a dream, a literal death. Please don't, please. Happy endings forever. Um, so their grand gesture could be like when they race to the airport or a destination and be like, wait, no, or there's a ticking clock with like a ton of obstacles and the train is leaving and like, will they make it? Um, or like, yeah, a bomb even. Um, so public decla declaration with risk of humiliation, which is what I'm putting in mind, um, overcoming a fear like heights or whatever they have to do. 
and you'll lay that out earlier in the fun and games section most likely it could be a literal loss of life but again please no um, sacrificing a dream or a goal for the other one to help them realize their dream or goal maybe the guy doesn't buy the bookshop to make apartments maybe he lets her buy the bookshop and make it everything she ever dreamed of um and then they get their happy ending and they kiss it's a great moment and now they're wholehearted so this is going to be a contrast to the very beginning maybe it was their meet cute some intimate joke they had their first kiss first date whatever reflect it back in that last scene and just tie it all together which also is uh save the cat and i probably the three act stretcher does that as well where it's just like that mirror image which I really love and this one also goes into epilogues if you want that so um, they just suggest that too perfect is boring don't like make everyone a cookie cutter at the end in the epilogue and like life is grand like no they still have their flaws and personalities and everything that we just read about them so create a scene with a little bit of conflict so that it's still intriguing but a nice little wrap up okay <laughs> that was a lot of information i hope it helped you guys let me know if y'all have any questions down below and let me know if y'all enjoy using romance in your subplots or full plot <laughs> i will see y'all next time thank you